Hey everyone and welcome back to the videos. Uh, something I left out from showing last time was actually using the event bus. So I want to make a quick quick video about that and uh, we're going to look at our simple game service. Now what I said before was that this was asynchronous, right? So, But this server is actually started all on the local client itself. This is just a demonstration so you know, we'll pretend something happens, you look in a database or whatever. And then um, when we get the response, we want to use the event dispatcher. So how do we do that? We need to use another injection. So this is a special one that uses um, this context keys enumeration. And we're going to inject the context dispatcher. And that is a public I event dispatcher. And I like to call it the event bus for the main context dispatcher. We're going to grab the strange names usings for those. And now we have the event bus. What we do is we say dispatch, and we're going to look at our service events. Service event connect response. Great. And now we're going to go back to our start app command. And we're going to do something that shows how to use commands asynchronously as well. So um, we looked at the execute override, but there's also a method called retain. And what retain will do is it will make the command stay alive after execute has already been executed. So if you don't call retain, as soon as it gets through this block of code, it's gone. But if you call retain, it's going to hang around until you call uh, something else. So we're going to create a connect response. Oh, my mistake, we're starting a server. So we'll say start server response. And then we'll say debug log started, started server. And that's how we'll know. And to do that, we actually need to also inject the same context keys context dispatcher because that's where we passed the connect event, which now I realize I'm going to have to call uh, a different event because it's start server response. There we go. So when we start the server, we'll pretend some stuff happens to set it all up, and then we'll call event dispatcher, event bus dispatch, uh, and then we'll send the start server response. And how do we? We grab these usings. So how do we uh, tell it that we want to um, uh, listen for this? Listen for this. What we'll have to do is say event bus add listener, and then we'll pass in the service event start server response, and we'll pass in the function start server response as a callback. So that's great. Um, the next thing we need to do is clean it up. So we want to remove the listener here. I'm just going to copy the rest of this. Same parameters as add listener. And then we need to call a method called release. So release, if you've retained the command, as soon as you release it, then it can clean up the command. Because strange isn't silly. I mean, it, it pools these commands. Otherwise, you'd have you know um, garbage collector problems if you use the commands too much. Um, especially with Unity, it's known that its garbage collector isn't the greatest. So uh, this will really help to pool our apps and um, have make sure we don't have any memory or garbage collection issues. Anyways, that's all for this video. It's it was just a really quick one. Well, actually, let's do a demonstration, and then we'll see if it worked. Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't save the scene. One more thing I'm going to do is just save the scene out. Here. In a scenes folder. And we'll call it rogue context. Rogue, rogue start. Now start us off. Let's see what happens. Good, so we got our command to fire, and then we made our request to the start server, and then we got a response back through the event bus.
So that's fantastic. That's all we want to do in this video. And in the next video, we'll be looking at Bolt and how to do stuff with Bolt. Thank you.